And hello everyone, welcome to another career talk for IT professionals with a site reliability engineer. So my guest for today is none other than Alistair Israel. Sir, can you say hi to our audience? Hi, uh, this is Alistair Israel, uh, currently a site reliability engineer. Right. So sir, maybe you can describe uh, exactly what is a site reliability engineer. So, uh, site reliability engineer was a term coined at Google. Uh, it's uh, it's an evolution of uh, from systems administration to ops and then DevOps and then SRE or site reliability engineer. Uh, where, where where I work at Ada, SREs uh, are responsible for both keeping the lights on, meaning managing the the IT operations of all our software uh, throughout the company. But at the same time, we also work on projects that improve developer experience, that improve overall observability and reliability, um, and you know, provide future value for the IT infrastructure of the company. I see, I see. No? And uh, that's a good um, intro no, of your role. No? And if I may ask, no, what, what value exactly, what makes, it, what makes you a site reliability engineer uh, versus, as you mentioned, uh, it was DevOps, not immediately uh, mm -hmm. after it. No? What What's the uh, uh, parang progression for that? Sure. So, uh, what, how we like to describe it is, uh, for our role as SREs, we like to keep at least 50% of our time free, uh, not just working on, on reactive uh, work, like responding to incidents or managing the day-to-day -day operations or uh, yung mga ad hoc uh, asks mm -hmm. or ad hoc, ad hoc requests from the rest of the company. So the, the our group, the infrastructure or global platform uh, services group, our customers are the rest of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to fall into the pure ops role where you're just doing 198, 100% of uh, what you do every day is just responding to tickets and requests. So we consciously try to bring that down uh, where the other 50% of our time, we, like I said, work on projects. And in particular, my background was uh, from developer, mm -hmm. as a developer or software engineer and a software architect. So what I bring to the table is more on that that uh, developer experience and that DevOps um, background. To give you an idea, one of the things that I'm work I've been working on just recently is uh, overhauling our CI/CD pipeline, meaning our continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. We've been running uh, a lot of things on uh, Kubernetes, if you've heard of it for so long now. And just now, we are adopting a new tool to do continuous delivery onto Kubernetes with minimal code. So the way we did it before is because we're all developers, we're all software engineers. But the way we did it before was we coded a bunch of scripts to take our software and put it into our Kubernetes cluster. Now, instead, what we're working on, or what I've been working on is, again, future, uh, future looking project where we took an open source tool, uh, Argo CD, deployed that, configured it, and so now we don't have to write our own scripts anymore. Uh, Argo CD is the one that looks at our Git repositories and takes our software and uh, deploys it onto Kubernetes. So uh, it's a lot less work for us. It's a lot more observable um, and, and less toil. So that's one of the other things that we try to avoid. And to the company, you know, they may not notice it, but uh, the, the high-level goals are really, uh, we make our deployments uh, faster. Mm -hmm. We make our software delivery more frequent and more reliable and more observable. Meaning anytime something goes wrong, we get an alert, we can easily roll back uh, and, and all that. So the rest of the software engineers on the rep for the rest of the company, uh, the end result is we want to make their lives easier. So like I said, that's really, these, they, those are our customers um, in our group. Necessary. Great, great. No, um, so like uh, fifty percent external, fifty percent uh, internal. No, and 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 with that, since um, you are the uh, uh, SRE, 
does that mean that you are actively coding as well or you actively write the scripts or is that like something like you lead and the uh, devops under you is the one that will execute right so so uh to give you a bit of uh, to add a little bit of color to that, mm. my official title is Senior SRE. Senior SRE, uh, yes. And to the with the rest of the company, I'm actually at the architect uh, or engineering manager level. But I don't, my role is not uh, a manager. It's uh, still an individual, with, we call it an individual contributor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I chose that because at this point, I felt like I want to focus on doing stuff rather than leading and managing people, leading teams and managing people. Um, I, in my previous roles, I've held roles as uh, VP Engineering, CTO, C, CEO, Founder. So those are really more leadership roles. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and when I joined Ada, I really said, yeah, I'd rather, these days, I think I'd rather go back to what I love to do best, which is, yes, uh, working with uh, my hands tinkering with stuff and coding. So uh, going back to my current project, one of the things that uh, I'm working on, I'm writing code for really is, so see Argo CD can call what's called the webhook. Okay. Right. And it just, it doesn't care what the webhook does. So what I'm doing is I take the webhook and then I also listen for webhooks, event notifications via webhooks from GitLab, GitHub, and all the other systems that we work on. And then I'm now trying to paint a picture of, you know, what happens and how long it takes from when uh, someone creates a ticket for, a, let's say, a new feature, an engineer gets assigned to the ticket, creates a branch, writes some code, uh, does a pull request, submits a pull request. There's the pull request gets reviewed and approved and merged to master, which kicks off CI, CD, and deployed to Kubernetes. So that whole end-to-end -end pipeline, we can now, I'm actually writing code on a day-to-day -day basis that takes all those events and tries to come up with that, that timeline and then eventually visualize it. So we're collecting what we call uh, the, the DORA metrics, the DevOps operations research uh, metrics. Uh, yeah. And, so that's why I like my role, I guess. Now, um, I'm not managing or leading. Not that I don't like that, but I really, from time to time, I kind of like to flip between management and just, you know, uh, coding. Hard, yeah, 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 hardcore, hands on. Hands -on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. 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 And um, would you say that this coding is then your passion? Um, or is this like uh, something like, and uh, now, or there's something else that you're also passionate about? I think, yeah, even when I was in more architect or uh, consultant or managerial you know, leadership mm -hmm. positions, I would always make it the point to keep my coding skills sharp. Uh, one is because, yes, it's a passion. For me, uh, I was able to, I told my wife one time, you know, for me, it's like uh, at the end of the day, it's like solving a crossword puzzle. Mm. When I write code, it's actually therapeutic that I'm solving a puzzle it's, you know, by writing code or by figuring out the language. Um, that's for me personally. But at the same time, I guess in the, in our industry, I, I, I cannot stress it enough that uh, you cannot be an armchair architect. Armchair architect. Right? Okay. Okay. What, what is an armchair so, architect? So, um, like for example, not to not to you know not to down downgrade the value of like certifications, but there are, there are people who all they do is take certification after certification, and then five years later, they just have a bunch of certificates. right certifications, and but they haven't really written uh, any code or actually implemented a system themselves from you know, hands-on ground up. So, so we call those armchair architects. Now, their view is kind of too high and sometimes too far detached enough from um, the reality of our industry. 
So you and I both they don't know. Practice the, the cer- their certificate, they don't practice. No? Parang it's academic lang for them. Yeah, so you and I both know our industry moves too fast. Six months, there's a new language yes, or there's yes. a new tool or there's a new technique. And so if you all you worked on and all you have is you know, two or three years old, Right. So for me, that's the other thing why I still like to code and keep up to date on all, all these new tools, techniques, and uh, platforms or whatever, is because I know that to be a, a really efficient, effective architect or uh, leader, engineering leader, you do have to understand these things. Maybe you're not doing it day to day, but if people say Kubernetes, you should know what Kubernetes is, what Docker is, right, and so on and so forth. What functional programming is, what React is about. Um, so, but I'm, so for me, yeah, it's a combination of I tinker with these things, play with them, I'm having fun, and then in my professional uh, career, uh, I, when I'm talking to you know, engineers who do this on a day-to-day basis, at least we can we can understand each other. Um, and if I may ask, no, um, some of our audience might be thinking, hey, currently I'm studying, I'm not really enjoying, or I'm not very passionate in in coding uh, is this something that you know uh, you'd think that they can grow to love over time or is this like you know um uh, parang nurture versus nature ba? Parang in that sense no? pa- passion of coding yeah i'd have to say yes you could grow to love it but then at the same time uh, i also am cognizant that people people really do have different interests and uh, passions for example i know a lot of people who are very excited at front-end development they make one change in the code and suddenly the page looks different uh, it behaves differently and you get instant feedback on what's happening Um, and i've seen people who successfully graduated from front-end developer because maybe coding isn't so you know a big you know, passion of theirs, but they still take what they know about uh, programming for the front end, and they instead become very, very good UI UX uh, oh, designers. Yes, yes. Uh, or on the back end, man, the people uh, who are who become, uh, let's say, business analysts or quality uh, quality assurance yes. engineers or QA analysts. So, uh, to me, in the, our industry, there's no just because we're largely dominated by software engineering, I think you shouldn't set yourself na a programmer engineer lang yung track. But if you're if you're really passionate about uh, user interfaces and interactions and user experience and design, graphic design, maybe pursue that. Sure. If you're passionate about the the business, right? If you want to get an MBA and, and get to know about what makes the business ticks then maybe uh, try to look into business analysis and systems analysis. Uh, if you're like me, who really likes to program, even on this off time, even on vacation, then sure, stick to software engineering because uh, you'll never run out of things to do in software engineering. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Actually, um, again, to our audience, you'll notice here that um, there's a variety of positions no? after X years. Almost all our guests have very different positions and very different background, no? And um, sorry, since we've talked about others, now maybe we can also, um, you know, go to the past a bit and ask, how about your journey? Um, maybe from if if it started during college or even before that, you know, um, up to this point, uh, what was your journey like? Uh, yeah. Uh... I guess I have to credit my father. I was uh, grade five. We were living abroad, and even on his meager uh, government salary, I asked for a personal computer, and he gave he bought me one. Um, and then that personal computer came with a manual that basically told taught you how to program in basic. And, and, and because that's a you wanted. A computer because you wanted to learn how to code, or was it like 
you wanted to play games and uh... actually yeah and, um, I got the computer to play games because before that Atari and then uh, Super Nintendo yeah. so I asked for the uh, computer to play games but this particular model of the computer came with a essentially basically a basic programming guide yes and that's I, like I said that's where that's I guess head. the passion was born uh, What happens if you type this in? And what happens if you do this and do that? And suddenly the computer is doing all sorts of magical things. Yes, um, yes, yes. So yeah, and then uh, of course it continued to college where by the time our professors were teaching, let's say Pascal, I already knew Pascal, and then C, I already knew C. Parang, um, I would just buy the books for myself um, and then learn the learn uh, things, uh, teach myself these things. And I'm still doing that until now. So I, of course, I started as a, well, to be honest, I started as a teacher <laughs> to my first job and then uh, got a soft programming job and then kept progressing up the ladder. Uh, I founded a start, my own startup way, way back in 97. That was modestly successful, but then I left it in 2000. I took up photography for a while for about two years, uh, turned my back onto IT, but I realized that you know uh, I'd rather keep photography as a hobby. And so I went back to IT as a profession uh, and then yeah, became engineering manager, eventually software architect, CTO, vice president, whatever, different titles, different uh, companies. And then in the past Siguro, five to 10 years, uh, this whole movement of Uh, well, 10 years ago, cloud, and then five years ago, DevOps, diba? and infrastructure as code and everything. So parang that's what brought me to where I am now, where um, I took my my personal software engineering and software architecture background, where I still consider uh, my core strengths are, but having worked uh, on uh, large systems at scale, you know, um, terabytes of data, Uh, thousands of uh, nodes or hundreds of nodes and hundreds of thousands or millions of customers you know, millions of end users that's the scale that we're talking of and that's where the the real job of SRE yeah. um, is like for us now is we bring software that's why it's an engineering position we bring our software engineering background to uh, infrastructure and operations at scale um, do you have any uh maybe a prediction or what do you see trend-wise? Uh, you mentioned 10 years uh, cloud, five years DevOps. Uh, what do you think is the next five years of um, IT would, you know, at least uh, is there a particular trend that you see uh, upcoming, no? Um, Definitely. Um, and this is also why I joined ADA. So for those who don't know, ADA is uh, we we run a customer experience platform uh, That basically means we allow our uh, clients to create uh, automated chatbots. So we have a dedicated machine learning team. We have our own machine learning models. We can understand hundreds of languages and so on and so forth. And I already see um, machine learning and uh, weak artificial intelligence or you know, the current state of artificial intelligence. Uh, feeding back into software engineering and uh, even our SRE or DevOps roles. For example, um, one co one uh, editor that a lot of people use quite popular now is Visual Studio Code, yes. right? Um, there is a plugin for Visual Studio that actually uses machine learning to predict not predict but to give you very very uh, intelligent suggestions on how to complete your code so it will actually look at all your code and all the code that it knows about from millions of other developers and if you start typing for instance in h you know, let's say in, in java um, for and then open parentheses and then titing na yung code niya na yung code mo throughout your code base it will immediately use parang offer a suggestion that follows your coding style but will do you know, or suggest what it thinks you intend to do so this is machine learning being applied to programming and software engineering right. 
Um, there's also this thing called AI ops, where you know if you've, you've uh, worked with any any large software system, you probably see how many log messages are generated. So we're talking about thousands of logs messages per minute or more. And obviously a human cannot go through all that. Yes. So now people are using machine learning and AI to do automatic recognition, classification, and uh, detection, yeah. And now everything, right? Uh, same with intrusion detection, because there are so many new exploits that are happening. Before you would uh, rely on experts. Now people are just using machine learning and AI to detect exploits as they're happening True. based on previous patterns. So uh, I already said, you know, maybe when I have time, I, I plan to think of taking my master's and it's going to be uh, along the line of machine learning because that's what's going to dominate our industry, I think, in the next 10 years. Great, great, great. Um, and maybe I wanted to ask also, you know, a lot of people, um, of course, um, and we, we have to recognize that you have been successful all these years uh, with your career, but maybe we can also ask you personally, how do you define um, what makes you successful or, you know, how do you define your own success? Uh, it's interesting. I just came up upon a quote uh, recently that says success is uh, just knowing what you want or where you want to be and then getting it or being there. So, for instance, if for you success is just monetary, if you want a million pesos in the bank, then that's easy. Yeah, just work hard, save, you get a million pesos in the bank. On the other hand, if success to you is being popular, uh, presenting at conferences, and then it's all about you know networking, social networking, and reaching out. And, and so on. Um, no matter what your definition of success is, I think one thing that uh, that I've come to consider a good, not just a metric of how successful you are, but also a pathway to that success. Yes. Uh, it's called autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Okay. And this is what you hold uh, yourself to. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So even uh, at Ada, we like to um, we consider this one of our engineering core values, where um, individuals and teams are granted almost full autonomy. Wow, that's fu full autonomy, huh? Almost full autonomy. We we decide what we want to work on next. Uh, we we make our own project plans and everything. So it's not top down, not very you know, not like most um, traditional software um, software uh, organizations develop where the CTO or the VP says this is what we're gonna do next quarter. No. Um, so of course there's the purpose part. So autonomy and then the purpose. So the purpose is there's obviously the company's purpose then there's a team purpose and there's the individual purpose so you 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 work with uh, your teammates and the rest of the company on defining what your purpose is but then you get the autonomy to pursue that and then in between is mastery so as an engineer um, I think nothing makes you more proud or more uh, fulfilled uh, than gaining mastery about the whole software crafts matter even when you're when you're cooking food or doing photography as a hobby but the aim there is mastery so you want to master your craft um, and so parang yung ikigai concept ng japanese yeah. wow. find what you're good at that delivers value that people want it's on. so this is similar where if you can find something where you have autonomy not the one maybe not full autonomy but enough autonomy uh, where you believe in the purpose and the purpose is valuable uh, not just to yourself but to society even. and you're able to pursue mastery of whatever um, field or tool. I think that for me is again a good definition but also a pathway to success good 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 uh, good advice no? and um, speaking about advice um, you know our audience might be asking how to be you po. Yung, um, what are your advice for them to follow in your success? 
Uh, yun nga. Uh, so I already said, I think it's really, really important. Uh, one of the things that we try to bring to our kids now is this thing called the growth mindset. Growth mindset. Uh-huh. Um, in a nutshell, it's not about the, kumbaga, we've always heard it's not about the destination, it's the journey. So growth mindset is the same. You don't praise the uh, result, you praise the effort. Internally, you also have to start thinking, in terms of success, uh, success is not getting, it's not being there, it's getting there. Getting there. But I, I guess you still have to find out where you want to go, right? Um, yes, of course. But the success part comes in the uh, putting in the hard work and the long hours and you know, keeping up to date with, with the whole industry and all the trends and everything. Um, and growth mindset goes hand in hand with um, lifelong learning. So if there's anything that, for any field, no, not just in IT, I think these two are more important the most important things for any young person to carry um, with them throughout their career you know, is lifelong learning, uh, always uh, always growing, always looking to grow. You know, good, better, best. Never let me rest until my good is better and my better is best. Wow. Um, Siguro to, to parang balance lang that. One thing I've also learned, uh, ako naman is obviously, hindi na ako kabata, but um, <laughs> so, pero yeah, no matter what your age, it's I think it's important to also manage your uh, your energy levels and uh, don't forget your mental health and your physical health, right. your well being. Um, I've also seen other people, naman, who just burn out five years out of college and they don't want to do their you know, job anymore because they put in. Too much I mean, um, without uh, taking care of you know, their well being and their energy level. So, that's true. Uh, balance it lang. Balance it lang. Hindi pwedeng kay ka ng kayod, kay si gusto mo maging sikat, gusto mo mayaman. And then what? 10 years later, you find out, uh, was it worth it? Nagasa <laughs> kita or something like that. Oh, exactly. Uh, Sakit ka sa pato, whatever. Uh, Panayan puyat mo, diba? Panayan inom mo. Right, right, right. Um, for our audience, though, sometimes, of course, they plan ahead. They look at us. Um, they look at, oh, I want to do that. These are my steps. But, of course, something always happens uh, unexpectedly. Uh, maybe you, you have, um, ha- you personally, have you um, seen this? No? Parang biglang, ito yung plano ko. So biglang, ay, may dumating na biglaan. And uh, how do you usually deal with that? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it has happened at least two or three times because I've started how many startups that have all failed. Uh, and I'm not afraid to admit that because that's the whole ano, ba, that's the whole entrepreneur journey as well. And again, it goes back to what I said about lifelong learning and growth mindset. That's why you don't focus on the outcome because the outcome could be a failure. Instead, you look at ah, what did you learn in the past uh, throughout that journey. And how can you apply what you learn now to the next, the next stage, the next couple of years? And you just keep doing that. Uh, eventually, you will get better, not just at your career, but at life. And, and the other thing is, you stop, you stop getting anxiety attacks and stress so much about. I I might. Uh, to give you an example, uh, when COVID hit, I actually lost my job. I was supposed to be in Singapore. Mm. I was supposed to move my family to Singapore. Wow, wow, wow. And then March, lockdown started happening. I was repatriated back to the Philippines. And I was out of a job for a couple of months. Now, of course, a depression. But then, again, you know what? Talking around doesn't get you anything get you anywhere so what did i do i i learned a new language and joined the volunteer group uh, that developed a covid response app so i joined uh what it was again oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, cool. yeah i joined yung devcon dctx project and we came up with the rapid pass system and in the course of that i learned uh flutter dart uh 
platform for developing mobile languages. And, and that rekindled my passion for front-end and development and programming. Um, so, yun, the unexpected, di ba, kaya nga agile and everything. The unexpected will always happen. Uh, the key to that is, again, if, ya, if you're clear in your purpose, uh, if you're on a path to mastery, and you know, if you take care of your well-being and your energy levels, but, um, you can you'll be able to roll with the punches. You will be able to take a step back and okay, we're blocked here, but what are the other options? What are the next step? What's our new roadmap? And three months roadmap, six months, two years, one year, two years. Um, again, that's whether it's in IT in your career or, or in your life in general. I think. That's a that's a good story, no? Parang basically, what uh, if a door closes, there's a door that's opening somewhere, no? Um, you might not see it immediately, but at least there's always a door somewhere. Uh, make sure not just to stand in the closed door and do nothing anymore, no? Exactly. Look for that open door. All right. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we're at 30 minutes, and um, to the, our audience, thank you also for listening in and also watching us, no? Um, sir, Alistair, do you have any last shout out, no? Um, to our audience, last shout out lang or yeah. Uh, yeah. Just I guess change is part of our industry and part of life, and and uh, our ability to respond to change. I think in hindsight for me is is the thing that that is the key um subject matter for any brand. So yeah. All right, no. And um shout out na lang din to sa Devcon uh, kasi yun nga na mention na rin dito, no? uh, if you're looking if you I don't know if Devcon's looking for volunteer, I assume they are always looking for and um that that's uh, actually a group uh, for developers and IT profe- IT professionals and volunteers, so you might also want to check that out. So. Alright, so that's it everyone. Thank you for staying in and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And of course, if you like our content, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thank you. Bye.